In real life, many people confess to being Jack the Ripper. The game is going to briefly discuss one of them, a man named John Fitzgerald. Another false lead followed by the police, Holmes. Yesterday's Times says that a John Fitzgerald who had claimed responsibility for the murder of Annie Chapman has finally been released. He was, it says, lying. Hmm, that's of little importance, Watson. It's incredible. It's been more than three weeks since the murderer struck, and the tension is as strong as ever. The press won't stop talking about him, and people are still full of fear. Perhaps the killer got what he wanted, people talking about him, and has chosen to stop committing crimes. What do you think, Holmes? I doubt it, Watson. Everything leads me to believe that he is in hiding and waiting for the right moment. The area is packed with police, and that would obviously hamper his work. You think he will start again, Holmes? I have every reason to believe nothing will stop him short of his arrest or his death. Sadly, our investigation has reached a dead end, and I fear that we'll need another victim to get back on track. Yes, how awful. And what of the case of the burnt mat? Have you resolved that? Oh, that's a matter of little interest, and resolving will be of no benefit above all to Miss Fleming. Ha! I hear the footsteps of my faithful Wiggins on the stairs. The game is afoot again, Watson. Mr. Holmes, the scribbler resurfaced. At last word, Pounce saw him racing to Central News Agency where he walks. Excellent, Wiggins. And still nothing on the doctor? Sorry, Mr. Holmes. He's one sleek yank, but we'll find him. Good work. Here's something for you. I must leave you, Watson. If I can get my hands on this bullying, I will have much more interesting news on the bothersome tumblety. I have only to change. If you can, Watson, I entreat you to stay here and await my word. We may not be more than two when the time to act comes. You can count on me, Holmes. I do like how the game tries to follow the real-life timeline of the Jack the Ripper murders. There's a lot of historical details and things in this game, which are accurate, and that's good. Some of the stuff is made up, though, and that's that's not as good. But here's the problem with that. We'll, we'll check out the date here when we reach the news agency. So, in the previous video, it was September 13th. Holmes was investigating things on the 13th. What day is it today? I must go to the Central News Agency. I'm at the press agency where bullying works. It is the 30th. It is the 30th. So Sherlock Holmes sat on his butt and did nothing for over two weeks. Are you serious, Holmes? Why have you done no investigating? It's like he's not actually concerned with solving the mystery of Jack the Ripper. Because he just sat at home and did nothing. Oh, and here's a guy. What do you want? It would be very informative to search Bulling's desk before meeting him, but first I must get rid of this bothersome person, perhaps by offering him a scoop. Giving him a scoop of ice cream? Oh, I'm sure he'd love that! No, I'm just kidding, this is a puzzle. We need to get rid of this man by showing him this poster. This poster. We're gonna give him the poster? Good evening, I'm looking for Tom Bulling, the journalist. He is an ear. He must be sleeping off somewhere. He gave me a tip. He wanted to save a scope for me. He always gets a good dirt, and yet when he comes in here, it's just to warm his behind. Look, he pulled his desk over the stove. Ah, and he told us the important desk is this one. Hmm, good to know. So this guy is clearly the exact same model that they used for Inspector Aberline. They look exactly the same. They're different characters, but... They're twins. Listen, Scoop, I'm bringing it over. Only if Bulling isn't here, I'm leaving. Wait, what's this Scoop? Bulling promised me a reward for info. There's a charlatan who does spiritualist seances that are a little bit special. He steals corpses from the morgue, puts makeup on them, dresses them up, and then uses them as puppets. I'll give you your dues. We'll pay you if this info is true. I'll write down the address of the hideout on the crook's leaflet, but the police will be in on this one, so you better get there in time. Understood. I'll go alone. Too bad for bullying. Hey, you wouldn't have a little something in advance. Look on bullying's desk. I know that he always leaves a few coins around for his snitches. Cheers. 
Watson won't be pleased that I'm divulging the case, but I don't see any other way. Again, it has been over two weeks, and Holmes hasn't yet told the police about the culprits that are stealing bodies from the morgue? Really? Why not? I... It's almost like Holmes doesn't really care about solving mysteries in this game. I don't know what's up with this. Well, let's examine the stuff around Bulling's desk. Permit me to defend myself. You were lied to, Mr. Bulling, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of hard to read. Even handwriting, yet fairly recognizable. Ah, we have a, a specific, specific letter. We've got more on the desk. So let's see, what's this? This is Bulling's desk, the one closest to the stove. These are Bulling's notes. They are of little interest at the moment, but one never knows. We're going to use them for a puzzle in, like, half a minute. A charred match. A match there. Some coins. I will take them. That will avoid suspicion if the journalist returns. Money there. And... This may come in handy. A rag. Excellent. Now let's open up this. The fire has almost gone out, but the stove is still burning hot. Bulling recently used the stove. Ah, uh, yes. So Bulling just used the stove. So what we're going to do is open up the stove using the cloth, right? Or do I need to soak it in water first? Okay, I don't need to soak it in water. A torn piece of blotting paper. Curious. Curious. It looks like someone wanted to destroy this piece of blotting paper that had red ink on it. I can make out a few more letters, but backwards. I need something to help me. So that cloth is clearly the cloth we used earlier to make a mask to get into the gas room. Also the cloth we got earlier, you know, we covered it with tar in order to get inside the house belonging to the body snatchers. That cloth has seen a lot of use in this game. So we need to find a mirror. Where is the mirror? And let me grab the backwards, backwards writing. It's... Oh, no! Holmes, Holmes, don't walk there. Don't walk there. Walk to the other side of the room. No, Holmes, other side of the room. The controls for this game can be kind of difficult. Like, I am trying to switch. There we go! Okay! I found the magic spot you need to click on in order to switch spots. So here we go. I think this is the mirror. No, this is a piece of paper. Bullying's boss, Mr. Moore, seems to be protecting the journalist. Right, then this is the mirror. By putting this piece of blotting paper in front of the mirror, I can read what is written. It says, information on the Whitechapel killer. You need to call by telephone. You need to call W.A. Apparently, our journalist gets his information by telephone, too. Sadly, the name is almost erased. Sadly, sadly, sadly. So we're going to call this person, and we're going to have two puzzles. Puzzle number one. Oh no, Holmes is stuck in a corner again. Okay, Holmes, walk forward. One step. There we go. No, 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 no. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Okay, so I need to click near the trash can to get him to step close. All right, good. Good, 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 good. Telephone puzzle now. If I telephone one of Bulling's contacts pretending to be his assistant, I might learn something of interest. This is a simple enough puzzle. Wallace B, and we have this picture. See, it's Wallace B, and that. What's the coin? The coin is 1875. So, that's the number we need to dial. Wallace B, 1875. Takes a while to get those numbers to appear, but don't worry, we'll, we'll get it eventually. This puzzle could also use some instructions, by the way. I, I think instructions would help. Walesby 1875, an ingenious way to save his contact. Central, Walesby 1875, if you will. Uh, thank you, I will wait. Walesby, I am listening. Hello, my dear man. I'm calling on behalf of Tom Bulling. Bulling? So you know where this hypocrite, this liar, this... Not at all. He is currently unobtainable. In the meantime, he has left me with a note asking me to pursue his work, and he told me that you were aware... That's just great. I dropped everything off at his agency, but he didn't even bother to do the same for me. Tell me he at least gave you the information that I was asking in return. 
I am ready, sir. I'm listening. Do the police have a suspect for the bizarre theft of cigarettes and carrots that took place at the commercial street market? So this is a puzzle, and I don't understand the puzzle. My guess is that we're supposed to read those notes. These notes here, Bulling's notes, like I imagine if we could read these notes and actually look at them, they would have the clue for the puzzle we're trying to solve, because this guy is clearly asking about Bulling's notes. Unfortunately, there's no way to look at these notes. I, I, I click on them, I right click on them, nothing happens. And they don't show up in notes here. By the way, the notes section, the notes don't contain any new items, they just expound on facts that are already stated. So I guess these notes are helpful, but uh, as they're saying, it's like you could totally ignore this section if you're actually just paying attention to the game. All right, so we get to solve this puzzle without any clues or any idea of what we're doing. So, the bizarre theft of cigarettes and carrots. I believe we are saying Scotland Yard is searching for a rabbit that coughs. I think according to Bulling that Inspector Lestrade's team is looking for a rabbit with a bad cough. Ah, oh, damned Bulling. One day he'll be in some serious trouble for mocking the police. And now, can you tell me, with regards to the parliamentary scandal, what did the head of the Whig Party respond to the Tories who were treating him as a great incompetent? So... Next, okay, so what is the head of the Tories saying? Uh, the head of the Tories says, Vote for me, I will surely be your best representative. According to Bulling, the head of the Whigs said, Vote for me, I will be your best representative. Good. That'll make for a good paper. There is one last question. According to a government social study, civil servants make the best husbands. Why? Make the best husbands because when he comes from when he comes home from work, he's never tired and he's already read the newspaper. I believe I can confirm that it is because civil servants aren't tired and have already read the paper when they come home from work. <laughs> Very true. Good. It seems like Bulling has finally done his work. As everything is all in order, can you now tell me where the information is that you sent to the agency? Yes. There is a large brown envelope near the dispatch cabinet. It's in there that we exchange our tips with Bulling. A thousand thanks. Goodbye, sir. My salutations to Bulling. And there we have it. I have no idea how to solve that puzzle. I think that's more of a joke puzzle than anything else. Maybe? Some of those headlines seem like jokes. I imagine these are jokes. compartments to organize the paper's incoming dispatches. And hold on a second. Yeah, see, Bulling's notes completely disappeared from our inventory. So I imagine if we had read the notes, they would have given us the clues to that puzzle. But unfortunately, there's no way to read those notes. Therefore, there's no real way to solve that puzzle legitimately. A mirror. I've already forgotten what that guy was saying. Um, he said there's a, a place where they keep their dispatches. It wasn't here on the desk, right? Yeah, nothing to look at on the desk besides that match. Because I thought the dispatches were... Come on, come on. Over here. There it is! There it is! Found it! Found it! Found it! Found it! It's right here. There are several documents in this file. Let's see. All right, so the man on the phone left this information for our fictional journalist. I think this guy, Tom Bulling, is not a real-life journalist. Some of the characters in this game are people who are in real life. I don't think this guy is. I, I don't think so. I wonder why Bulling is studying this tale about spring Hill Jack so meticulously. And it looks like Bulling was kind of building up the legend of Jack the Ripper in order to sell newspapers. Like, this is clearly a list of names he made up for. You know, he's like, oh, what could I call this killer? I'm gonna base the killer off of this Spring Hill Jack character who shows up in magazines. Maybe he could be, uh, Spring Hill Jack 2.0? 
What does that mean? I do like Doctor of Death. That's kind of a cool one. And uh, what's this? Mr. Charles Moore, thank you for the testimony from the Whitechapel Killer. Ooh, from Inspector Abilene. Well, well, a piece of information about the murders transmitted exclusively to the police without informing the press. That has piqued my curiosity. Uh, perhaps I should go to the police station to get more information. Yes, that is interesting. And then here's the second part of the letter uh, from Charles Moore, this Charles Moore, sending a letter to Tom Bowling. So what happened is that Tom gave this letter to Charles and Charles gave it to the police. That's what happened. What does that mean? I have inspected everything, but there's no sign of bullying. He must have dashed off to his HQ, the Wasp's Nest. However, before I go to see him, I should find out about this mysterious information. It could help me get something out of the journalist to the police station, then. I do want to read that more carefully. Let's see. They took the bait. He says, yeah, given the thanks from Inspector Aberline, they took the bait, even if they were defending themselves. So we'll get the information firsthand and make history. This is making me think that the confession from Jack the Ripper, this testimony confession, is fake. That Tom made it up. That Tom probably just based it off the Spring Hill Jack character, gave it to his friend Charles, and had Charles deliver it to the police. I think that's the story here. We will find out in a moment. And I believe Holmes is saying we can't go to the pub yet. Instead, Holmes will go to the police station, right? Let's go to the police station. Can you at least go inside the pub, maybe? No, if Bluto sees me, it could prove to be quite dangerous. Ah, that's right, because Holmes is wearing his disguise, the disguise he used to talk to Bluto. So this is a weird thing. Sherlock Holmes wears this disguise when he goes to the police station. And that's weird, because that's the disguise he wore when the police caught him. Right? He broke into the police station and was talking to one of the criminals. Uh, Inspector Humphreys kicked him out of the police station, got really angry at him, and Holmes is still wearing this disguise at the police station. Again, it's like, Holmes, change out of your disguise! Show up at the police station as yourself! Why, why would he go in disguise as a criminal? Come, come. Back again, are we? Come this way, good man. The inspector has a few questions to ask you. Here is the man, inspector. Congratulations, Humphreys. So, my lad, one would say that you owe us a bit of an explanation for having left something with us. What is your full name and profession? Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective. Well, how about that? Mr. Holmes, can you explain this get-up? your presence in the neighborhood despite my instructions, as well as this most opportune restitution of jewels? Firstly, I should tell you that not being under your command, I never understood what you said as an order, but rather as advice. I thought I would be wise to follow them to a certain extent. I intended to explain the stolen goods sooner or later. My presence here will allow me to fill you in on a few conclusions that... If it is in regard to the Whitechapel murders, it won't help us much. We have no doubt that we will be revealing the identity of the murderer to the people in the area in a day or two. I'm impressed, Inspector, and I offer you my sincerest congratulations. Nonetheless, you should investigate a certain doctor. Listen, Holmes, let us do our work. You've rid us of a great pain in the rear end by finding those jewels for us. It's weeks of work that you've saved us. But I think you're a little underqualified for a case like that of Jack the Ripper. Until it's over, I demand that you do not set foot in the area, is that clear? I take note of your advice, Inspector. You mentioned Jack the Ripper. Pardon me, but you know the name of the murderer? Oh, it's from a letter that the Central News Agency sent our way. It was written by the killer. And even if it can't be proven, it must be recognized that the signature is striking. This information is confidential, and I would ask you to keep it to yourself, Holmes. Can I have a little look? Out of mere curiosity, Inspector, then I shall disappear. Hmm. In that case, I don't see any objection. Thank you so much. If I could complain for a moment. So, that conversation with Inspector Aberline, the things he said do not match the subtitles at all. They just do not match. Whoever was reading those lines, 
did not follow the script. And here is that letter, the, the letter. Uh, so speaking of real life characters, uh, this leather apron uh, to John Pizer or John Pfizer, uh, real life person, real life person uh, was one of the suspects, but was never arrested by the police. And I can't read this, this thing on the side. It's written sideways. That's, that's odd. And... Me? Not up to discovering who Jack the Ripper is? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we, Inspector Abilene? I know who wrote the Dear Boss letter signed Jack the Ripper that Inspector Abilene gave me. And, above all, I now know why. This Tom Bulling was inspired by this fantastical character to build a myth out of the Whitechapel Killer. Perhaps he would be receptive if I shared my discovery about him and prevent him from accusing Squippy. I must find him at once. My best bet would be to try my luck at the pub. Holmes, you just spent two weeks doing nothing. I don't think you're in a position to go, What do you mean I can't solve this mystery? You have not been trying to solve this mystery. And just again, if Holmes had shown up in his normal costume at the police station, everything would have been fine. We could have avoided all that drama. Honestly, if he had just been said, if he had just shown up and said, Hey, I found these stolen goods that Bluto stole. That would be enough. The police would accept that. Ah, Holmes, I got your message, and here I am. Now, here's another complaint. What message? Holmes did not send a message to Watson at any point whatsoever. And really, did Holmes need to find this, this letter? Did he really need to read this letter in order to make that deduction that it's a fake from Tom Bulling? Because he already had all the evidence that this letter was fake. This letter was 100% fake. Holmes knew that going into it. He didn't need to actually read the letter. Anyway, let's talk to Tom Bulling and blackmail him. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's what we're going to do now. Perfect, Watson. That oaf Bluto is looking for us with evil intentions, and he may be hiding here. I will try to get more information inside. You, Watson, will be our lookout, and at the slightest suspicious sound, do not hesitate to call a constable on his rounds. I don't think Bluto is actually going to be here. If I recall, Bluto doesn't appear for the rest of the game. He's just going to be hiding on the other side of this door, really. Ah, Mr. Bulling, here we go. Let's speak with you. Good evening, Mr. Bulling. We know each other? No. However, I have some information that may be of interest to you. Talk, my friend. A pipe for you if what you say is worth something. Does it have to do with the Whitechapel murders? Indeed, I know the identity of the man who wrote a letter to the police, a letter entitled Dear Boss, in which the author claims to be the Whitechapel murderer and is signed Jack the Ripper. What? It's a journalist who is inspired by spring Jack in order to strengthen the credibility and the seriousness of his agency. This new Jack will give him some first-hand information that he, in turn, will dole out sparingly to the authorities, as well as some carefully distilled indiscretions that the big papers will come to beg of him. He plays both sides off against one another and becomes the chief orchestrator of the rumor. He wrote this letter in this very spot and he has red ink on his fingers. Like you. What exactly are you after, my friend? You've been threatening a certain squibby to distribute a telegram naming him as a possible suspect in these murders in revenge for an old feud. I would suggest you don't write this note and that you leave squibby alone. I'd forgotten about the existence of that rapscallion. I threw that at him when I was visiting the station to get the dope. You should have seen his face. You must also stop sending these letters that waste the authorities' precious time. Right, well, I don't even know what you're talking about. I have a great relationship with the Bobbies. Just ask around. I don't have to answer to nobody. Now leave me alone. I do find it a little disappointing that Sherlock Holmes isn't investigating this in pursuit of the truth or the mystery. He only cares about talking to Squibby. That's basically the reason Holmes went through all this trouble. Farewell, sir. Good riddance. And we're going to talk to Squibby outside. But first, let's talk to this bartender. Let's see. There's the bartender. Because you might remember when we talked to Squibby, Squibby was all like, Hey, you've got to get Tom to stop writing mean things about me. <laughs> that was the condition 
for Squibby to give us the information about Dr. Tumblety. Hey, you wouldn't be the gas man that Bluto's looking for. Hmm. Don't know him. Mm, uh, uh, maybe we should get out of here. Yes, sir. Oh, and the barmaid has nothing to talk to me about. So yeah, uh, yeah. Let's just get out of here. Talk to Squibby. Let's hurry to the police station, Watson. We are close to our goal. Squibby will be able to reveal what he knows about Tumblety. There he is. Squibby. So that's it. You're a free man again. We were just coming to the station to find you. Shh. Yeah, the Bobbies agreed to let me go and I came to see Bluto before ferreting you out. So, you've seen the newspaper man? Yes, he is in the pub and everything is taken care of, but I'm waiting to hear what you have to say about Dr. Tumblety. Okay, but we have to be quick. One night, I goes to see Bluto in his hideout that ain't far from the boarding house where this Tumblety bloke has a room. I see him coming in too. He must have been on one real binge. To the point, the Tumblety fella was there, and he smiles at me, all nice-like. He tells me he's a great Yankee doctor, but my business interests him. I'm interested, I tell him, but I'm not the type to just jump right in without getting to know a person, see? He invites me around to his room to talk business, just him and me. We empty a bottle or two, and all of a sudden, like, he wants to show me what he's got in this big trunk that he always carts around places. I just about vomited, see? In these jars, just like pickles, you know, there were pieces of meat. And he whispers that it's the lady bits of some old dames. He called them picky bins. I call them love killers, I would. Yuck! After that, he starts to go on about rich folk. They ain't nothing but dogs, and I won't tell you the worst of it. Then he comes all close to me and puts his sweaty hand on my leg. He was one of them types, not me. I don't wait a second before I give him a good thrashing, and I start running and let go of him, and he still wants to see me again just to talk business. But then I had to do time, so business. Do you know where he can be found? Why, ain't he in his digs? Maybe he got to like it life behind bars too. I heard that in some jobs, there's a way to... Thank you for your information, and we'll meet again, my friend. Here is the sum I promised to get you out of London. Ciao, fella. I've just got a little score to settle with Bluto, and I'm heading for the country. I want to mention three things. Number one, Squibby is clearly the exact same character model as the bartender. The two of them are twins. Number two, I want to express my extreme disappointment at how this Dr. Tumblety story is being resolved. Now, remember, we've been looking for Dr. Tumblety since video number two. So it's been about four hours since we first learned about Dr. Tumblety. We've been searching for him for a while. In terms of the actual game, it's been about a month. It's been about a month. Holmes has been looking for this guy about a month and... What's the resolution here? Well, Tumblety's at his house. That's where he lives. We know where he lives! We have known his house for four hours now! That is a really disappointing solution. Like, we knew his house all along, and we just wasted so much time going from character to character to character, and we could have just gone to his house and knocked on his front door the entire time. It's so frustrating. Okay. Well, we are going to have a little bit more with Dr. Tumblety in the next video. Um, what we're going to see now is we're going to have a, a 35 second scene of the next murder being discovered. We're going to pick up on that later. So we get to see the next murder, then we follow up on Dr. Tumblety, and then we follow up on the murder. And I feel like that's badly done. Like, they should have had... Uh, Dr. Tumblety completely finished and wrapped up and then moved on to the next murder. But, no, that's not how they did it. Anyway, enjoy the 35 seconds of Sherlock Holmes totally missing out on the fact that someone's being murdered less than a block away from him. Blimey? Ah! 
Lipsky! 